and then all of a sudden he'll throw a perfect pass. And you say, how in the world did he do that? Vince Young from uh, midseason last year on has been the highest percentage passer, and he's right there for his career now, the highest percentage passer in Texas history. It's called perception. And once you uh, uh, have that tag placed on your back, whether, oh, he's a little slow, or he can't quite do this, and he can't throw the ball, then you, you, everybody keeps saying it and thinking it. But you're right. You look at the numbers and the statistics, and he completes passes. Young's a heck of a player. I, I just, uh, and I'm not taking anything from Reggie Bush or Matt Leiner. I just feel like Vincent Young is college football's most outstanding player. Eighth time last year, he's led a come from behind Texas victory. A Leiner special. As Brown has to keep it, run out by Jay Henry at the 47. If you had those two head to head in a close game late, Leiner refuses to lose. At Notre Dame shows that he'll do anything yep. at uh, the last possible instant and pull out a victory. Young has shown that same back for Texas. If they happen to play in the Rose Bowl and get a chance, both of them, to pull out a close game in the fourth quarter. They both had that specialty their entire careers. What a treat that would be if it turns out that way. And, and I had total conviction prior to last week's Oklahoma State game with Texas that Texas would beat them. Uh, I think there's a crack in the ship a little bit. Muff putt here, a rare West Virginia mistake tonight, and it is recovered at the 17-yard line by UConn. Not many mistakes tonight at all, like you said, by West Virginia. Mims has not been the uh, primary return man tonight. He does have an interception, however. He gives this one back over at the 16 is where the UConn recovery happens. Hmm. Randy Edsel saw his team turn over short field after short field with the Mountaineers in the first half. Brandon McLean got the recovery for UConn. And uh, Lou Allen, the redshirt freshman from Salem on that carry, and a late flag. Well, that's the kind of play that allows you to set the tone up front with your pads. Come down the hill. One on the defense. Pendles is half the distance to the goal. First down. Eric Wicks, hearing it from Rich Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you know, coaching, somebody once uh, recently said, you know, the wins aren't as good as the losses, and you get over the losses. My friend, uh, Aaron Taylor, was telling me that about, about a buddy of his, and I was like, what? Coaches just never forget anything. Early whistles and flags here. Well, progress has been made. UConn had, what, seven false starts the last time? Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Yep. UConn season high, 12 penalties against Rutgers, seven false starts. And so there's their first one tonight on the false starts, and, that, and that's, that's progress. Just uh, two penalties tonight. When you're down 35, you look for progress anywhere you can find it. First and goal. Randy Edsel's not had many nights like this. Seventh year head coach of the Huskies. Coming off the best three year stretch in school history. 23 wins the last three seasons, including a runaway in the Motor City over Toledo. <laughs> Two in a row. Prior to the snap. Paul Starr, offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty remains first down. William Beatty back up to Grant Preston at left tackle. Redshirt freshman from York, Pennsylvania, getting some playing time. Down to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, in their last game, Dennis Brown, this young, true freshman quarterback, they had five false start penalties. It was a big issue for them. And so this week in practice, they really worked on his cadence, getting everybody to understand and get on the same page. But again, it's coming back to bite him. Two straight false start penalties. they got to get it corrected. 
Best shot they've had at six all night. Allen tripped up at the 13-yard line. And, and, and one of the few times, remember I was telling you earlier in the game about the offensive lineman not getting out and getting bogged down in their in their tracks? You know, it, it, it was one of those where the left guard finally got around and found the linebacker. And, and here's what I'm talking about. Watch, watch the guard get around, and he meets the linebacker in the hole. You get a positive gain. It's still not at the point you want it. You want it a little quicker, but at least he got around the center box. Good block on Kevin McLee, who has returned from missing some snaps because of injury. Into the end zone and overthrown in a crowd of Mountaineers. The uh, target, the tight end, Dan Murray. But the right read, and, and, and the play was almost there. Good execution by West Virginia, boxing Murray on his route. But Brown knew where he was supposed to go with the football. UConn, unlike West Virginia, likes to throw the tight end. Dan Murray is their third leading receiver on the season. Brown's challenge on that one, get it high enough that it wasn't going to get picked off, but low enough for Murray to bring in. Not quite. Third and 13. And come out. Connecticut, first and a half. I was just going to say, surely not the third ball start on this drive. Timeout, 334, third quarter, UConn trying to get a touchdown. Not many here since halftime, though. In the third quarter, only one field goal by West Virginia. Third and goal from the 13. Brown corralled at the 23. That's Brown. It's back. Jay Henry and Johnny Dingle back up defensive end combined for the sack and that far back after the fifth Mountaineer sack much as they'd like to go for the six they have to get Matt Nuzzi in and suddenly hope for three on what will be a 39 yard try Nuzzi with the only UConn points of the night on a 41-yarder, which uh, at the, that time made it 7-3. to three. The only time it's con been competitive all night. And he is again good with 2.46 to go in the third quarter. The Huskies' all-time scoring leader has all six tonight. Always one or two, doesn't matter how cold. 38-6 on a 40-degree evening in Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, boy. Oh, you know what? The heat, though, escapes through the top of the head, most of it, and so they're they're well protected. There's a lot of room to escape through heads like that. <laughs> Do you think they'll be up for biology in the morning at 8 o'clock? I would not bet on that. Only points here in the third quarter. And then by the kickers, exchanging field goals. And on the return by Antonio Lewis, we send it down to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, it's an unusual homecoming tonight for some local Morgantown High School football players who play for UConn. Shane Fogarty is a quarterback, a backup, who walked on for UConn several years ago. His younger brother, Seth, then joined him at UConn. Now, these two guys played right here in Morgantown, played for Morgantown High School, and they've got about 36 people here in the stands who are really West Virginia fans, but they're supporting UConn tonight. Now, guys, the other interesting aspect of this story, Shane is Caucasian, as is most of the family, but Seth is African-American, so a lot of times people are saying, are you guys really brothers? And sure enough, they are. Illegal substitution, 21, the 12 been in formation. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Well, the Fogarty's not particularly enjoying this return home tonight. But the Mountaineers give Rich Rodriguez some coaching grist for the week. That had uh, been completely mistake-free. That's their second violation of that nature. As... Darius Raynaud is sent backwards. And after leading 35-3 to at the half, only three points here in the third quarter, a loss of 
Wow, 23 yards. This possession started at the 30, and this tackle inside the 12. We've seen this play, though, a couple of times tonight for uh, West Virginia early on work with Raynaud running around the corner. It, You know what? It's almost understandable if West Virginia goes in the tank mentally. There's no excuse for Connecticut to quit. They have to play hard. They get a loss of 13. And the quarterback draw. It's been Pat White all the way at quarterback. And a pickup of seven. Pat White, fourth round draft pick by the Angels out of high school in Daphne, Alabama. Has played both sports, football and baseball, since he was four years old. Now, four-year-old T-ball is, is common. Four-year-old pad tackle football. I'd never heard of that. No. So four years old, he's been out there in pads. Organized? Organized. And his dad. I'm from Texas, and you'd think, we'd, you'd think we'd have heard of that down there. Fourth grade's about as early as I've ever heard kids in pads. His dad is the uh, fire chief, Bo White, and never misses a game. He will make the drive no matter where West Virginia plays from Daphne, Alabama. When they were growing up, he and his brother Bo, he's got a younger brother as well, never missed their practices, never missed their games, and still doesn't, even though they're as far away as uh, from southern Alabama all the way to Morgantown, West Virginia, or wherever they may travel. The chief, Pat's dad, always in the house. So on fourth down and 21, Phil Brady at his own five. Brandon McLean with... Uh, no doubt, UConn enjoying some of its best field position of the night. And McLean quickly into Mountaineer territory to the 46. You know what? It, really good officiating here on this last play where Pat White got hit going out, and then he jumps up, and he's going over to, you know, to say something. And the official jumps in there and saves him, right? Good job by John Smith, the referee. Nice job, John. Preventive medicine with a big body. It's a good thing he's a large one, man. He put the wood on. And not, and not many people hit Pat White tonight as hard as he did. You know, stopped him. Biggest hit Pat White's been involved in. He doled out. Oh, yeah. A block on the uh, reverse field run by Slayton in the first half. That one intended for the tight end, Murray. Inside the final minute of the third quarter. Dennis Brown all the way at quarterback. D.J. Hernandez with a uh, wrist injury, fractured left wrist, non-throwing wrist with a pin in it. Not needed tonight, so uh, the true freshman, Dennis Brown from Miami. In just his second collegiate game, first ever on the road. Getting experience the hard way. New Allen on the carry. And, and, and you know what? They're just, they're not running. They're missing, missing their lanes. There's no coordination between ball carrier's eyes and blocking up front. They are still at minus yardage on the ground for the night. Minus nine rushing yards. UConn averaging 217 rushing yards per game coming in. 26 carries for minus nine. Brown is nine of 18 through the year for 94. And is going to tuck and run here and is tripped up at the 40. Johnny Dingle. Originally a Florida signee, first team All-State, also out of Miami. As he tackles Brown to end the third quarter. Just an exchange of field goals. West Virginia built a 35-3 lead at the half, and they continue to coast. Fourth quarter from Morgantown, West Virginia, all Mountaineers, 38-6. As UConn looks at a fourth and four, going for it from the Mountaineer 40. Brown again under duress will tuck and run. And unable to bounce that one outside as Eric Wicks came up. To end the latest UConn possession. Holly Rowe, 136 years ago this week, something was invented that uh, we all enjoy to this minute.